Looks like we're recording. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Juliana Robbins. I am the program manager for California Center for the Book. California Center for the Book is part of California Library Association. And I'm here today to just share a little bit more about our community conversations with veterans initiative. This is an, an initiative that we have with, um, right now it's 18 libraries across the state of California, including Whittier Public Library that we're here with today. And the goals of this initiative are to help the veterans and their families and their loved ones and the community members reach out and connect to each other. Further, it's to help the veterans connect with resources in the community. So the Veterans Connect um, at the library is our strong partner, and they have several libraries, more than our participating libraries across California, that all have Veterans Resource Centers at the library. And we're gonna hear a little bit more about Veterans Resource Centers, what the physical spaces are like and what services they offer and how they support veterans in their community. And then um, we're also gonna hear a little bit more about some of the programming that's happening across California as part of the Veterans, uh, as part of the Community Conversation with Veterans Initiative. But before we get into all of those details, um, I wanted to, first of all, say thank you to Rachel and Diane from the Whittier Public Library who are here with us today. And a huge thanks to Delaney Ellis, who is the producer of our featured documentary, Ground Operations. We're gonna get a chance to hear from her in a moment. And also a big thank you to Louie, who is um, from the American Legion and also essential to the success of the Veterans Resource Center at Whittier Public Library. So thank you everyone here today. Um, we're gonna lead off by hearing a little bit more from Delaney. Delaney, um, Delaney joined us in fall of 2019 when we all were able to get together in person in Pasadena as part of the California Library Association Conference. And Delaney shared with us then the story of how she came to um, make this documentary. And I wanted to hear from her a little bit more about how did, how did you get interested in the topic of veteran farmers and how did you come into making this documentary? Tell us a little bit more about your journey, Delaney. Sure. Um, hello to all you Zoomers who are online with us. Um, I, ha I live in Ventura County, which is an agricultural county just north of LA. And so because I was in the film business for many years in Hollywood and I'd be driving back and forth, I, I realized how precious the farmland was here and what um, an asset it was and, and resource. And I was really concerned about it going away. And, and so the years passed, I became a documentary filmmaker and I started making films about uh, sustainable farming and agriculture in Ventura County in particular, but the issues I was dealing with are issues that are true nationwide, you know, environmental stewardship of agriculture, decent housing for our farm workers, you know, things like that, land preservation, how we protect farmland. So um, because I had done a series of these short films and served on ag committees and stuff in my county, um, when I met Michael O'Gorman at an ag conference, and he was, he'd been a farmer for 40 years, organic farmer, and he knew, having been um, of age in the Vietnam War, that when the vets came back, they were going to need a lot of help. And so he knew, and, but being a farmer, he also knew with, the, with all of his friends that they were all at retirement age, and they needed a whole new generation of farmers to come in. And so he said, you know, bing, the light bulb goes off, let's put these two groups together. And so I met him just as he was starting that effort and at that conference. And because I'd been so steeped in agriculture and all the different challenges and issues and books and stuff that I read, I recognized what a phenomenal answer this was to um, many of the challenges that agriculture faces 
you know, besides just needing a new generation of farmers. So um, that was what got me interested. And so I said, let me tell you a story and let me take it across the country and help you build this organization. And so that's what we did. And I like to say that, you know, when I started filming, it was, I, I didn't even have any help yet. It was just me and my camera and a wireless sound mic, you know, and uh, we were on a, on a three, it was a long weekend and uh, Michael got together about a dozen vets and we trooped around Northern California looking at about four different uh, organic farms and um, doing farm tours. And I'm shooting like crazy and asking questions and talking to people. And from that point in like 2009, 2010, when there were just 12 veterans on a farm tour to today, 10 years later, there are now 18,000 members of the Farmer Veteran Coalition. And when you see in the film, you see that there are two different farms, one in California and, and one in Florida, um, that were run by veterans teaching other vets how to farm. And so 2008, 2009, right in there, there were these two farms. And now there are over 250 ag programs across the country that are focusing on veterans. Um, and, and it just so happens that they're really, um, you wouldn't necessarily think of putting those two groups together but it turns out that all the things that you get in training in the military to make you a better soldier, sailor, whatever, um, are very much the skill sets, skill sets that you need in agriculture and farming and ranching and beekeeping and all the forestry, all the different ways of providing food. Um, because you have to be able to work in really difficult physical situations with like chewing gum and duct tape, you know, uh, and keeping everything together and rolling and you can't let obstacles stop you. And these people just like go over, under and around obstacles. So um, working with heavy equipment and all kinds of weather, um, strategic uh, management, risk assessment, all of these things that you learn in the military are things that directly uh, translate to working the land and producing food. And when you couple that with the restorative nature that, I mean, you can tell, take anybody and take them out to a garden and start digging in the dirt and planting things. And I will guarantee you their mood will shift unless they're 14 and then they'll hate you. Um, but <laughs> But for most adults, just being working with the natural world is so restorative uh, and it's challenging and veterans love a challenge, you know, they're mission oriented people. And so really um, solidifying the food security of America is a really worthy next mission for these men and women. I've seen vets who have been suffering terribly from PTS. Um, and as well as Vietnam vets who come up to me after screenings and say, oh my God, this, this has changed my life. You know, I, this gives me a way forward. I, I love this, I could do this, you know? And there were Vietnam vets who would see it and say, well, gee, you know, I've been gardening for years and now I see this film, I gotta go bigger. I gotta start growing for my neighbors and stuff. And so, um, it's just been the best work of my life. You know, it, it, I learned a lot about who veterans really are. And I think because they're only 1% of the population, many people don't know a veteran. They don't know the kind of people they are. They have, and I did have um, a prejudgment about who they were. And I'm happy to say those were completely shattered because I found veterans, men and women, both to be the most capable, visionary, um, just the most can-do people you ever wanna run across. And our food system needs them. We're lucky they're stepping up for this. And the thing about the film and showing them at your library, for instance, I'm so grateful you're doing this program because veterans do have a tendency to isolate which actually works well if you're farming, <laughs> you know, or ranching, 
be out on the land. But um, it, it sh it, the people in the city don't realize, they think farming only happens out in the countryside. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Urban gardening and urban farming is at an all-time high, and it's only going to continue to increase. So I know a guy who makes a living growing basil for Whole Foods on an eighth of an acre, an old parking lot that used to be a crack lot in Anaheim, California, and now has a big greenhouse on it, and he makes a living growing basil. So it just goes to show you that from almost nothing you can put a business there are businesses together and yes the government is helping and there's a lot of money for training programs and there are uh, low interest loans and there are people within the usda who are primed and ready and we got them we got veterans into the farm bills so um there's a lot of support the farmer veteran coalition which you see in my film um, with Michael O'Gorman, who I mentioned earlier as the founder of that, uh, is stationed here in California, but it is a national organization. Um, there are state chapters in many states and more coming on board all the time. And um, so they have a huge national footprint and um, they are real helpful in helping you to get financial literacy, connecting you with resources. And then my, my website, uh, groundoperations.net, does the same thing. You can go there and you can see the veteran resources and there are colleges and universities with programs and um, all the questions that people ask at the end of a screening that the audience today is wondering, you could probably find on my website because <laughs> I, you know, curated that over years of finding um, what was, what could be helpful out there. Because the whole point is trying to connect people with resources. And that's why it's so invaluable what you're doing at the library by having a veteran resource center uh, for the I'm same really, thing. I'm really happy that you focused on a couple of things there. Is that number one, food is important to everyone in the United States. Food security is vital to our national security. And exactly. that this film is not just for veterans, it's mm -hmm. for everyone who lives in the California or the United States and is interested in learning more about their food system, supporting veterans, supporting American farmers, um, learning ways that they can find food that is grown locally and support small business men and women across with our state. And the other thing that you mentioned that I really wanted to focus on is that libraries are, you know, adept at providing information and access to resources. And we're really relying on our community partners here, the American Legion and other veteran services organizations to link us into the veterans so that they can bring their expertise and knowledge and we can all come together and make those connections between um, individuals and agencies that are all sort of working to do the same thing. So you made some really excellent points right there. And I did want you to talk a little bit more. Uh, we're, in, we're in really interesting and really challenging times right now, right? We're recording right. this all from our homes. I'm here in Long Beach. You guys are in the Whittier area, which is a uh, close neighbors. Delaney, you're up in Ventura County. Um, recently, uh, before the, the state was closed, recently um, this movie was screened up in Fresno um, and we had Michael from the, Far the Farmer Veteran Coalition there in person talking with community members after the film um, about all of these topics and it was a, a great conversation. Um, so I'm hoping that this will reach many people in their homes across the state of California but how do you think that um, this film and these topics are relevant and how are the connections like coming about? I know people are at home like baking bread, people are gardening. Um, talk about you know, why this movie is as important as ever 
um, just in our current situation, <laughs> if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Because um, the film is a few years old, it came out 2013, but um, strangely, it's as relevant or more so today than it was, you know, as it was then, because we still have all these soldiers coming home, military people coming home, we have, and, and needing meaningful work, and we still have all these farmers who are retirement age who need someone to step up. But more so, I think that the pandemic has really, you know, they're saying, well, it shows the cracks in the culture, the society. Um, people have always, as long as people have been on the planet, almost, I mean, since agriculture started anyway, about 10,000 years ago, um, people always grew food at their home. They had chickens. They grew a few things here or there. I mean, most of us are disconnected from that. During World War II, there was the Victory Garden Movement because all the food was going to Europe for the war. And, and um, I, I mean, hats off to Eleanor Roosevelt. I don't know how she did it, but she got everybody in this country doing Victory Gardens. And it happened over like a year or two years. It was amazing. And they provided 40% of the food necessary for the population. And so, as you say, you know, thank God nurseries were considered essential businesses because I've been to mine about four times. And I, I wait until I get all my lists together and then I, you know, do a mad dash, masked up and, and come home. But I can tell you that when it hit and they were in shutdown, I once did a film on uh, emergency preparedness. So. I'm one of the geeks that has like a really good emergency storage situation. So I was in good shape, but the best was, cause you can get tired of canned food, you know, <laughs> quickly. And that kind of thing, rice and stuff. You want some fresh vegetables. And I was so happy I had a winter garden kicking along because I had chard and kale and five kinds of lettuce and everything else. So I could keep fresh vegetables going at night because we didn't go to the store for several weeks. And um, I think that everybody has recognized this. And aside from, you know, not everybody's cut out to maybe garden for themselves. What I think is a real missing link here is that veterans can do businesses doing home gardens for people. You know, like they can go to your house, Rachel, and they can go to your house, Diane, and they can, you know, and they can have their circuit where they may install and maintain gardens for families. And that's a great way for, or churches, to allow a community garden space with a veteran to farm that. Um, you know, they usually have more lawns than they need. And then you've got like a CSA, people show up every Sunday morning to pick up their vegetables and go to church. Um, I think that there are ways that we can integrate veterans um, and let them start small so they can, you know, learn their chops and make some mistakes and um, help grow the food in our communities because the food system as it is, is it, it's showing its weaknesses. If the trucks stop rolling, we have a two to three day supply of food in our grocery stores, that's it. And I think everybody saw that when they did the huge run to Costco's and suddenly, I mean, I don't know about you, my grocery markets are only just recently back to having anything kind of reasonably all on the shelf all the time. So I think this has uh, been an eye opener for all of us. And I think it's a real opportunity to encourage veterans and through the American Legion halls is a good way to do it. I know they're trying to find ways to reach out to the young vets and um, a gardening project. Uh, you know, or a community garden project in town, it's a great way to do it. Thanks so much, Delaney. Um, that's actually perfect timing. I think we're gonna transition to hearing a little bit more from Whittier Public Library about their Veterans Resource Center. Thanks. Well, hi, I'm so, I am so honored to be part of this. Thank you, Delaney. Thank you, Rachel and Juliana for putting, putting this together. Thank you, thank you, Louie, for, for consenting to come on. Um, we're really excited about this uh, documentary, and it's too bad that, you know, we're in this situation where we can't 
invite people into our library to to watch it but we're doing the best we can um, i just wanted to give you a little bit of um, background about the veterans resource center we have a um a i don't know maybe 12 by 12 space 12 by 12 foot space in the library in um the adult reference area and we have uh, hopefully all the, the things that they need to get business done. We have a printer and, and laptops and books and reference material and a nice round table and chairs, which we're probably gonna have to adjust once we open because they're not <laughs> six feet apart. Um, and we have our, which, and our, our most important commodity, of course, are our, our volunteers. We have about 18 volunteers right now. Um, they serve two, <laughs> two uh, per shift. We have, uh, they, they serve two hour shifts. So our Veterans Resource Center is open or was open 10 to two Monday through Friday. So there'd be two per shift and uh, once every other week, we would have a veteran service officer, uh, the LA County veteran service officer, and he has a direct line to the Veterans Administration. So those are the days that we get, we get people waiting outside our library door entrance to come in to, to see him. And, um, you know, we could get like 15 people within those, those four hours. But uh, uh, our, our Veterans Resource Center um, has been in existence since February of 2014. It, it came about through the Library Outreach to Veterans Initiative, which um, we are just very grateful that, that Nicole Schuler, our, our librarian, who has since moved to Illinois, uh, started this and um, just started out, out and gave us gave us a, a nice uh, format to work from. And um, we just really, we love the partnership. Um, we have, of course, the American Legion and our local Lions group, the Whittier Host Lions. They have contributed to our books, to the reference books, and also our foundation has uh, contributed, uh, of course, CalVet. Uh, we, we are just constantly looking for partners. We Last year, we partnered with NAMI um, to put on a program, the Community Conversations Program, um, and we're, we're just really excited about that. I, I just want to tell you, Delaney, I am just so excited. My favorite things, my bets, the gardening and library. I mean, I go, wow, that's really, that's really something. Especially now, you know, we really found out the people are finding out the importance of, of growing your own food. I am just so grateful for my limes and lemons that, I, and that I'm growing. Um, but um, anyway, I just wanted to hand it over to Rachel to kind of talk about uh, a success story that, that stems out of our Veterans Resource Center. Hi, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, as Diane was, or Diane was saying, we have a veteran service officer that comes every other Friday. And he started, um, Adam Bennett, he started back um, in March of 2019. And just, you know, just some quick numbers that he uh, gave us is that he comes every other Friday and he, like where Diane said, he has a long line of people waiting for him, but he's been able to process about 42 claims successfully. Um, and some of those are still ongoing, but 22 of them have been awarded, you know, for the total of like $190,000 in retro benefits to veterans just from getting those claims started and processed and going through the whole thing. Um, he does the driver's license applications so they think they can get the uh, 
the indication on their license that they're also a veteran and he's done about 50 of those successfully they've gone through. Um, but yeah, that's probably the biggest success is that we are there and we've been there since 2014 and having a veteran service officer has been the biggest help so far and brought in so many veterans, you know, to get the services that they need without having to go maybe all the way down to Long Beach. Um, especially veterans are a group that, you know, have given so much and deserve, you know, our ongoing care and consideration. So anything we can do to help them over here is, is great, I think. And he's done so much just on those Fridays that he's been here. And um, yeah, that was one of the things I liked about the documentary is just the healing part of it, you know, especially after they come home, you like to see some of that happen. So it really was a wonderful uh, documentary about that, a small part of it, but the farming really contributes to that. You can see it, you know, in some of the people that you talk to, Delaney. You know, there's another thing I'd like to talk about. Uh, our, I want to brag about our Veterans Resource Center. Um, we, we had at one time a, a homeless gentleman that was frequenting our library every single day from the moment we opened till the time we closed. And, you know, he was just so studious. He'd be reading every single, every minute he was, he was at our library. And we reached out to him, and it kind of gets me kind of uh, emotional. And um, we asked him, how are you? And we found out he's a veteran. He, and um, so we asked him. We asked him to go to our programs, like our community conversations program last year. We also had a program on gardening, um, gardening for your heart, mind, and soul. It's primarily for veterans, but you know, it was open to um, the public too and he attended and we have some really priceless pictures of him gardening in this grow box with our with our other um, veterans resource center volunteers anyway so then I asked him if he wanted to be a, a, a volunteer at our VRC he said yes so he's been volunteering the beauty of it all is our volunteers have, we're like a family. We have helped him. Every single one of our volunteers have helped him in whatever way, whether it be um, giving him um, Tide Pods to go to wash his clothes, whether taking him out to get um, something to wear so he can, he can um, go on interviews. Um, and, and Louie took him to, to this shelter, um, this Bell shelter, that, that uh, a permanent shelter. But anyway, the long story short is that um, in March, beginning of March, right before all this, this virus thing happened, um, he got a placement in the, the Bell shelter. And it was the, the last day that our Whittier cold weather shelter was going to be open. So he didn't have to sleep on the streets anymore. He transitioned right into the Bell Shelter. And he's there and Louis gone to see him. And um, that's our success story. That is our success story. And, and also another thing I wanted to mention, you know, we have the dollars and the numbers of people that, that have been helped, the number of veterans. But there's also the, um, the part that we don't see dollars and cents. And that is um, one of our volunteers said that a, a veteran came by and wanted to talk. And he, he was a World War II veteran, I believe. And he opened up and talked to one of our volunteers about an incident or several incidents that he experienced. And that's the first time that he was able to do that. And so our VRC gives an opportunity for the veterans to, to share stories, to open up if they would like to. And um, so that's, that's the, the priceless um, value to our VRC. Thank you. That is. <laughs> 
That's a very high value. Thank you for sharing, um, Diane. And thank you, Rachel, also for sharing. And this leads us perfectly into welcoming Louis, who is one of the volunteers who's going to tell us all about the American Legion and how they work together with the Veterans Resource Center and anything else you'd like to share. Take it sure. away, Louis. Okay. You hear me? Okay, good. Uh, yeah, we, as the America Legion, as, you, as I don't know if you know, it was created back in March of 1919, right after the First World War. And there was a need to help assist veterans and families, and especially children. And so it was created by an act of Congress. So we're under the jurisdiction of Congress. And one of the pillars, or I should say the mission, is to assist all our veterans and veteran families in hand, handling uh, benefits and also assistance with uh, homelessness and of course making sure that there's plenty of food for the family to eat well through the years it has evolved to the current situation we have now and when uh, nicole schuler came to us for assistance in helping her set it up at the whittier library we didn't hesitate it we decided to do it because that's what we've been doing for years. And so it was another avenue of, uh, for uh, opportunity for us to be able to source out our skills and also the opportunities to our veterans and their families of all eras and all ages, uh, our insight into the VA system and to help them uh, basically uh, guide them through the process of filing claims and also appeals and getting the medical services they need. And when Nicole Schuler came to us uh, with this idea or this program to set up a Veterans Resource Center, uh, we felt right away that we needed to get involved. And we decided not to do it as directly as the American Legion, but as volunteers. So several of us, which is about six of our uh, members, decided to be volunteers and we all pick a day we pick two hours out of that day to serve the table or the desk or the chair and we interface with the veterans and now that we have a accredited veteran service officer we basically interface between the veteran and that officer to free up his time to handle uh, during the short time that he is there as many uh, claims or you know services that he provides to the veterans. We, as an organization, are always looking for resources to uh, basically get our information out. And that was, uh, from my experience at Vietnam Vet, is what was lacking when we when a lot of our uh, soldiers and women included came home, because it wasn't there. You had to deal with the VA directly. There was no community-based sources and uh, that we can actually walk into, like the library, and have somebody assist us in one way or the other. So uh, we still continue to do that. We still continue to interface. We go to out to the communities, events, and uh, set up a booth and also pass out the information, not only for the American Legion, but also for other organizations that are veteran based, like the American Vets, uh, the Amer uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, the Disabled American Veterans, and uh, the Purple Heart recipients also. And, uh, but as an American Legion, that's part of our creed is to get out there and basically provide the assistance. And so that's what we do. Uh, and uh, we continue to do it. Uh, right now, our big concern is, of course, with our older veterans, which are the World War II, Korean, and some of the older Vietnam veterans who are suffering probably from the virus. And, uh, and unfortunately, we're starting to see our World War II vets starting to disappear every day. And uh, of course, we have our younger vets who are coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, we have to deal with the suicide rates as well so we try to get information to them and their families as to how where to go to get more uh treatment for the veteran and basically be able to have uh, 
somebody that they can actually speak with in person and try to help them try to assist their veteran. Now we're dealing with not only men, but also women. And women, some of them have families, they have children. And we try to help them as much as we can to get their situation, because there are some homeless families out there that are veteran based. And uh, I know I've seen it downtown LA, where there are families on the street that are veterans. And uh, fortunately, a lot of the nonprofits that are situated there to help out the homelessness, uh, take them in and have them set up. Now we have the Salvation Army with the big facility on Bell, who help not only veterans, but other homeless uh, citizens or residents. And uh, it's a huge complex. And when I took the veteran uh, to this location and followed it up with him, he has improved quite a bit. So it is helping them as little as we, as we do. It still helps them. And when, I, when uh, Diane mentioned this program, the agricultural program, I thought it was a good idea, especially for veterans who have PTSD, because it's a good way for them to help them recover as much as they can and basically, you know, growing your own stuff, even in your backyard, you know, maybe it'll, it'll take up some of that time to take them away from uh, remembering bad thoughts or, you know, their combat experiences as well. And it's good for all ages. For all of those veterans who have served in combat, it's a good avenue for them to get out their frustration, to beat up on a uh, piece of dirt, uh, maybe a weed growing out of the ground, but it's an avenue for them, another one for them to use in recovering from their military experiences. And we continue to do it. And we, can, we also, uh, encourage our other members to volunteer some time there as well. But with this uh, virus shutdown and restrictions, it's hard to do. And it's frustrating for some of us because we're used to the daily activity of getting out there and, and getting our boots on the ground with veterans and their families. So we, I look forward to the documentary to view it. I haven't seen it yet. And um, I just want to um, kind of use that as an invitation to everyone out there in Whittier or the greater community who may be watching this or come across this um, to go ahead and make sure you do take advantage of this wonderful limited time opportunity where Delaney has made the documentary available to the Whittier community members. So we want you to share this documentary with veterans, with veteran family members, with community members, with nonprofits, with farmers market people, with everyone in that greater Whittier community to get people to start thinking about and making those connections where the American Legion is connected to veterans who are connected to um, nonprofits that serve the homeless population, and those are connected to the library. And we're all connected because we know that when eventually we come back together physically, the need is gonna be even greater. So I think the more we know about options for people and other agencies that are working for the same common goals, um, the better off we are. Um, if we can refer people to the Farmer Veteran Coalition, if we can talk about the American Legion, if we can talk about nonprofits, that are serving the community, if we can help people um, access their benefits um, and connect them, use a face and a real person and a chance to sit down across from someone, even six feet apart or more maybe, um, to connect them with the federal and the state benefits that, they're, um, that they have earned. I think that's a wonderful thing and we should all hopefully be working for that goal. Um, so, I don't have anything further to add except for one small thing, and um, that is as um, after you've watched this recorded conversation today, there's going to be a short link to a survey, the SurveyMonkey survey, and it takes probably about five minutes to complete. 
and it helps us get information about the public programming that we're offering, usually in person at libraries across California, but right now online through libraries across California. And we'd really appreciate you taking five minutes to complete that survey so we can continue to offer these uh, public programs that connect veterans and the community. Um, if Rachel, Diane, Delaney, or Louie have any final thoughts, um, I'm happy to hear those. But with that, I will say thank you so much for all of your support. Delaney. Thank you, Delaney and Juliana and Diane too, and Louie, thanks for joining us today. Have you given them the link? Or are you handling that a different way? Different we'll way. have all of that, yeah, posted together okay. in a nice little package that people can access. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. Good viewing. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Louie. Nice to meet you. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, Diane. Bye, Rachel. Bye.